what is going on it is Miguel and I'm coming at you with a video that is going to be really quick but it is going to be highly beneficial uh, I'm going to be showing you how to properly put a pixel as well as uh, track uh, uh, the regular conversions I always forget the name of them but track the regular conversions as well as create custom invert conversions so this is going to be really quick this is going to be really straightforward but it's going to be something that's going to help you because this is how you are going to be able to track sales uh, and track leads within your funnel, uh, as well as add to carts or whatever it is that you're trying to do. So uh, let's get into it. This is the, like whatever funnel that you have, this is where you're gonna be building it. Obviously this is inside of ClickFunnels if you, if you can't tell. Um, so then you would be going into the funnel and then you would be hitting settings. Um, so after you hit settings, uh, I'm obviously gonna have to blur uh, some stuff out uh, but you go to here, um, I obviously can't show you this stuff because it shows you my pixel ID, although you could probably just find it if you really wanted to. Um, so then you go to setup, you go to manually install the code yourself, and then you want to copy the code from right here. And then just like it says right here where it says paste in the website header, literally head tracking code, paste. Uh, and then I'm not going to scroll up so I don't have to edit anything further. Uh, but boom, the code is literally put in there. You scroll down, uh, you save an update. Uh, now the code is going to live on this page. So as you can see right here, I have what's called Google Pixel Helper. Uh, you definitely want to get that. Um, but uh, when you click up here, uh, you see it says, uh, as long as you have Pixel Helper, it'll let you actually see the pixel. Um, and then you can also see the ID. I'm going to show the ID. I don't give a fuck. I don't plan on using this pixel. Um, so boom, you can actually see it right there. Uh, and then you'll see page view. Um, the reason it's getting an error is because I have uh, ad block. Um, so if I hit pause, this is obviously Splash Man site. Um, so if I pause and then I refresh, uh, now you see page view. Um, there's a check mark. So that means uh, that it's on there. And because it's on the head tracking code for the entire funnel, uh, it's going to populate as page view uh, no matter what page they are inside of this very specific funnel. Now, how do we track very specific uh, events inside of the funnel? So what we do is uh, after we're done um, with this code, uh, what you want to do is come to this page. So you'll, you'll go to setup, you'll see that, and then you'll hit continue. Um, now here is how you track uh, each specific event. The only ones I personally use is purchase, uh, lead, and add to cart. All the other ones are kind of pointless. Um, viewed content, like there's there's really no point. Uh, it's basically page view. Um, so uh, no matter what it is that you're trying to do, um, all you have to do. So let's say we're we're trying to. Uh, let's just say, oh, we're trying to collect a purchase um, because this one is where uh, you want to be able to do it very specifically. So um, let's say the conversion value, this is where it gets a little uh, tricky, so I'm going to make sure I do this one. So conversion value, let's say it's a $12 product. Um, I'm doing it in USD, uh, so that's the, it's the dollar over here, obviously. Um, and then you scroll down and then it's created the code for you right here. You want to copy this, uh, come in here, you want to go into edit page. So you're actually going to the page editor of, so this is assuming that this is the page uh, that they get to after they purchase. So you would put this on the thank you page. You're going to have upsell pages inside of your funnel. This is going to go on the order confirmation page. So after they're done with all the upsells, they're done with all the downsells, um, whatever page that they hit when they're done with all of that, that is where this code is going to be. Um, and you make that dollar value uh, one of two things. Um, personally, I just make it the dollar value of the actual product, um, uh, the, the first product that they buy. Um, but you can also put it as the lifetime value of your customer in general. The reason I don't like doing that all the time is because that fluctuates. Uh, but it is something that you can do. Um, so, uh, you will go to settings, tracking code, and then once again, the header code, you just paste that code right there, um, X that out, 
hit save. Uh, now we're going to back out of here. We're going to visit this page again. And then if you see, uh, it may not have actually populated quite yet. Boom, there it goes. So, um, and then once again, pause, refresh the page one more time. And boom, there we go. So now we see the page view still. And because we have the purchase pixel on there as well, the value is $12, the currency is the US dollar, uh, and it's both loaded. So uh, if I were running uh, per the purchase conversion or whatever it is, like no matter what, um, if anyone hits this page and it's for this pixel and the only reason why they're on this page is because of an ad that I had placed on Facebook, then uh, Facebook is going to attribute whatever ad that they saw that got them to this page um, with the purchase. So even if they saw um, a lead magnet page and uh, within 30 days, it's called an attribution window, uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. Um, but within 30 days, if they saw an ad from, from me uh, and then they're going through like my YouTube or one of my clients' YouTube channels, they're just watching stuff um, and then uh, they see a sales page uh, and it has that same exact pixel on there, the same exact pixel ID that you see right here. Uh, and then they go and buy something um, and then they hit a purchase page, even though they were not looking at that ad, uh, as long as it's within that 30 day window um, and they buy something, it's going to pop up on Facebook as they got a purchase because uh, it was a standard event. That's the word, because it was a standard event, it's going to show as a purchase. Um, even with custom events, but I'm also going to show how to, you can do a custom event as well. So custom conversions. Um, we're going to create a custom conversion. Um, let's just say um, we already did purchase, so let's make this one a lead. Uh, so cool, we got it on main pixel. Um, let's select the category lead. Uh, and then here's where, so look, you need to see this. Um, notice, I'm just going to change the name of these so it can be very, very obvious. Uh, testing. Um, and then I'm going to make the name of this one uh, uh, Fracas. I don't know what that means, but it sounds funny to me. All right, so notice the URL right here says testing. Um, now, what this is, here I'm going to create a variation because this is actually important. Um, sorry, but you know, hey. Uh, and then I'm going to do the naming conventions exactly how I would do it in real life. Fracas-1. All right, so you see the URL right there says, excuse me. So you see the URL right here says testing. This is the URL that you want to send people to. Um, so that uh, it basically it chooses 50 50 wise whether or not they're going to go to either one of these pages um, so when you are putting a url inside of your ad you are going to put the url that goes right here so that they can get either one of these pages and that so that you are able to split test but when you are creating your custom conversions and when you are creating your custom audiences you do not want to use this url Instead, you want to use the the back, whatever the fuck this is called, the path um, that shows up in these. Uh, and that is because that is the URL that is going to pop up once they actually hit this page. And that's what's going to actually be showing up on Facebook. So you would be taking this URL. Um, and I always just leave it as contains, but you can put it as an exact as well. Uh, and then put the dash one since we already know that it is that link. Um, and then you will put that as well. Uh, so now um, you just name it. So uh, testing um, lead. Uh, so the way I name this is I name it as whatever it is that they are getting. Um, so if this was a, a T-Rex fat burner um, or the sauce whey protein, uh, uh, subtle shout outs um, so if you were if there were any one of these products um, and I was doing a custom conversion I would put the product so t-rex fat burner or it would probably just look like t-rex 
a dash buyer or um, whatever the lead magnet name. So let's just say uh, fat burn ebook uh, downloader uh, download because instead of being instead of downloader, this is the actual event that's happening. So I'll just put download. So fat burn ebook download. Um, and then category, I would make sure to put the category as lead. And then there's no need for a value. Uh, but if this were a purchase, obviously you would need to uh, put a purchase value right there. But it's not so uh, lead, um, all URL traffic, make sure that this is the, uh, the right pixel, otherwise it won't work. Um, and then just hit create. Boom. Uh, so now, as you see, activity, low volume, conversions, last received, uh, none. So all we have to do is uh, refresh this page a couple times, just, just, just refreshing it, refreshing it, refreshing it, just fire that pixel a few times, uh, and then refresh this page. Um, and it's not popping up. And I have a feeling I know why it's not popping up. So. Uh, if I made a mistake, this is the perfect opportunity to show you guys how to troubleshoot. Um, so it's not popping up, and I have a feeling I know. I have a feeling I know why, and it's probably because the category right here is popping up as lead, and we have the thing on there showing up as purchase, uh, because that is the thing that we made. So um, let's just switch this. Uh, notice the per I'm firing off the purchase pixel over and over again. Um, Set up, manually install, continue. Uh, let's switch this to the lead one. Um, and then let's take this off, put lead right there. Back up, take this off. Um, and then obviously the code doesn't change on both ones because they're technically two separate pages now. Not even technically, literally two separate uh, websites. Um, so back out. So cool, now uh, if we go into here, um, you'll see that uh, it's firing as lead instead of purchase now. Uh, so, ah oh crap. All right, so when we show this, uh, custom conversions, um, refresh, fire this pixel off a couple of times. I should probably pause on this site. Refresh that page a couple of times. It's just firing the pixel a little bit. Uh, and then refresh this page. Boom, there it goes. So active, last received in the last minute. So that's exactly what the problem was. Um, unless I just didn't look at that at first, but uh, at least now I know for a fact that the pixel is firing and this custom conversion is actually working. Uh, so that is how you, you test it. Um, the second this says active, uh, then you know that you are golden and your custom conversion works. So uh, that is it. That is how you put a pixel uh, on your funnel inside of ClickFunnels, that is how uh, you set up standard events, and that is also how you set up custom conversions. I hope you learned something. I hope this was easy to understand. Uh, if this was helpful, then I would like you to take a second to subscribe, uh, hit the like button, check out some of the other videos, and um, in the comment section, I'm going to be putting a private Facebook group that I have uh, known as the Funnel Commanders. Uh, there's all types of people in there is the easiest way to get in contact with me or any one of my mentors uh, So if you want to go ahead and join that just go ahead and hit the link inside of the comments So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and until next time peace